Hi, Mary. Hey. Go. Rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Sorry. I pledge allegiance. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the October 17th, 2022 Town Board Meeting. I'd like to make a motion to open up the Town Board Meeting this evening. Second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cole, aye. Cardone, aye. Skegrow, aye. All right. So, just so everyone is aware this evening, if you do come up to speak, please speak clearly into the mic. We have a stenographer this evening. State your name and what town you live in. And tonight, because we have Roberta McBride and Helen Knickerbocker from our finance department at the side dais, uh, new highway superintendent Pat Patterson is up here this evening. We're going to share our mic. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sal, you want to get into the food truck festival recap? All right, so once again, we had, you know, absolutely spectacular weather. Um, I think we've had great weather every time, so the weather gods are definitely with us. Uh, I think the attendance was between four and 4,500 people. Uh, everyone seemed to have a great, great time. Monroe Gives was there in force. They did a great job raising some funds. All in all, it was a great day. Everyone was out there helping, supporting. Uh, it, just a great all-around community day. Most of the trucks came close to selling out of food. So, uh, once again, very successful, wonderful afternoon for the uh, town of Monroe. Yeah, it was, uh, it was well done by our, our highway department, our, yep. our maintenance department, uh, uh, as well as, uh, you know, Amory, Jen, who, and Sal yourself, who, who did a lot, of the, a lot of the grunt work getting those trucks in, uh, and our finance department for collecting the funds and getting it in the bank today. That said, the next food truck festival is June 17th, 2023. Okay. All right. Okay. What's the date of that, Mr. Uh, June 17th, day before Father's Day. Thank you. Okay. This Saturday, the Greater Monroe Chamber of Commerce, uh, in partnership with Town of Monroe, is having our trunk or treat. It's going to be here at Town Hall in this parking lot. Parking will be in the lower parking lot. It's going to be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Jenny Carrillo from Army Navy does a great job assisting us with it. She, uh, I shouldn't say assisting us. She does she 90, runs it. Yeah, she runs it. She does 95% of the work. So uh, if, you, if you have kids or you want to come down dressed up, come on down. It's a great night. The actual, all the trunks are sold out, and she has somewhat of a waiting list in case somebody backs out. Uh, there's a no scare. Halloween at Museum Village on October 22nd and 23rd from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, there's ticket prices, uh, ages three plus is $10 and two and under is free. For more information, you could village www.museumvillage.org. The Halloween community celebration at Smith's Clove Park, that's going to be on October 29th from 12.30 to 3 p.m. Uh, prior to that, at the YMCA, there's a trunk or treat from 11 to 12. And then there's uh, the Village of Monroe on Mill Pond Parkway. We'll have a candy crawl, a candy crawl costume parade that kicks off at 12 and runs down Lake Street, crossing into Smith Clove Park. Uh, there's going to be hay rides, costume parade, activities, et cetera there. Okay, this, uh, tomorrow, I'm sorry, tomorrow, uh, the clothesline project will be coming to town hall tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, they'll begin setting up the domestic violence awareness to display to be, to be viewed from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in this meeting room. 
that organization used to be called Safe Homes of Orange County. Now they're known as Fearless Hudson Valley. And uh, if uh, you get a chance, stop down. I'm sure it'd be a, it's a, a very worthwhile cause. On Saturday, October 29th, from 9 to 3, in our building, uh, I'm sorry, in the MOVAC building, sorry, in the MOVAC building, they're having a blood drive uh, from 9 to 3. Uh, so I was at last year's, and it's a, it's a nice event. And they do, uh, blood obviously is needed in the blood banks. Yeah, they're 95% down. Is the it, amount is it of blood, much? yeah, it's, it's, yeah. They're at dangerously low levels of, of blood. So, it's so low. I think a lot of people over, over the course of the, the pandemic were afraid to give blood. I, I regularly give blood, and there was a period of time that I couldn't because one of the side effects of COVID for me was anemia. So I would be turned away because my iron was too low. So it's only recently that it's risen up. So I think I'll be able to get to that one because I have nothing else going on that day. Okay, uh, and the final announcement on Saturday, October 29th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Town of Monroe Highway Garage on 87 Mine Road is the electronic recycling, the shredding, and the tire recycling event. So if you have any radios, old computers, computer displays, computer hard drives, phones, stereos, TVs, and everything else, uh, you know, bring them down. Modems, DVD players, computers, VCRs, laptops. Appliances will not, I repeat, appliances will not be accepted. Will they take Betamax? Uh. That's a collector's <laughs> item. You want to hold on to that. It's an electronic, so I'm sure they will. It is an will. electronic. I'm sure they will. Okay. A ColecoVision set. Next up is a public hearing for the Monroe... Uh, town budget and the benefit assessment rolls. So I will make a motion to open up that hearing. Who will second? Call the question. Bingham aye. Who will aye? Cardone aye. Ancarello aye. 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 So moved. No public comment. No public comment. Okay. Uh, I know Smith Clove is here to present. Would you step up to the mic? Just everybody state their names that you're on the Park Commission. Chris Sullivan. Kristen Skoriak. Mary Beth Burton. All right, so uh, we're here to present our budget request. Uh, you received our email, and we're here to answer any questions you may have regarding our budget. I know, I know you had a, a moderate increase. It was uh, yeah, a little over, little over 10,000. Yeah, uh, it was roughly 3%. Yep, and what I did is I plugged in for the preliminary budget, which this Town Board will have to approve or disapprove this evening. I plugged in $312,500. So that's a little more than what you're asking, but it, I, I just like round numbers when I'm, when I'm doing that. So Yeah, we're just trying to stay you know, in par with the cost of living for our employees. Um, okay. We have maintenance. We have full-time employees. We have YAC counselors that we want to just stay in par with cost of living. Do you, I know you had mentioned in the email, in the letter, that there was a five-year plan? Yeah, we have a five-year plan as well. Oh, okay. Yes. Is it possible you can send it to us? Send that to you? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Sure. What, I'll what, send that over to you tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Are there any, what are some of the major changes that you have going on in the budget? So, this um, is just for the public. I, I trust yeah, you, Chris. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. Well, Even you, though I know I'm you, not I sure trust if I you. you but okay. <laughs> no, so we, so we have some um, renovation projects. Um, our lighting system is um, getting up there in age. Um, our uh, bathrooms need to be renovated. What are you pointing at? Uh, we, we do want to. We want to have an online presence. We want to update. We'd like to update our website and online. A little closer to the mic. Sorry, um, online registration for programs and for the ID system, we need to make some updates. Then we want to make YAC um, <coughs> a little more interesting. We know kids, Bridges looks like it's permanent. Uh, so then we want to be able to attract more kids into YAC. We're right. thinking about offering sports and STEM clinics, and that kind of stuff. Great. Yeah, we want, we want to update our computer systems. We want to go online with our registration. 
Um, we want to update our Facebook page, like, I'm, like you guys just did. Um, we, we need to overhaul pretty much everything at, uh, at the park. Have you spoken to anybody about yes. that? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're, we're talking to New Windsor IT, yeah. yep. and we're getting quotes. So that, yes. That's, that's who did ours. We're, we're, we're in the process of, of updating our yeah. whole system. In yes. fact, did, 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 they, did they do the Villages update? New Windsor IT? Yeah. Neil, if you could just come up to the mic just so that the stenographer can hear. Anyone commenting? Please. Mayor, it's Neil Dwyer. Mayor, Mayor Neil Dwyer. I just asked Neil if... Dwyer, no, if, we had a private company. Okay. Yep. All right, thank you. Yeah, okay. No. So, yeah, um, those are some of the updates we need to, to upgrade. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? I have a question. The concession stand, I believe it made more money this year? So we did something different this year because we didn't, we didn't receive any bids last year. Um, so we decided to do it in-house. So we hired someone to run it for us. Um, we've been getting a lot of feedback um, where people are interested in taking it over the way we used to do it, where they would pay us a fee as a, a lease um, and they'd run it. Um, so we were out to bid right now, and we're receiving bids now um, as we speak. So we're probably going to go back to that system because um, I think it's I think we, it's more cost effective to let someone run it for a fee than it is to keep someone in house doing it ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Questions? Just, um, it's really not a question, but you know we have a, uh, a grant writer that we contract out with and uh, maybe some of these projects would fall within you know the, the scope of the grant so I think it's something that we could um, I'll put you in I'll put him in touch yeah, put him with, touch yeah. with them because maybe we'll find something where you like, work and there seems to be a lot of state money out there the reason I said it is just looking at your <clears throat> looking at the worksheet and I saw a state aid parks you know that type of stuff they seem to be <clears throat> giving money away up in Albany so you might as well avail yourself of some of it and if yeah, we, we, we can help the, the grant writer. We're more than happy to do so. Yeah, we would 100%. Yeah, would like to do that because it's not just our renovations. We also we would like to uh, provide some type of shelter for Yak because right now we only have our office, which can't hold everybody. So we'd like to build a bubble or a, a facility, something where we can have the kids indoors and not send them home when it's raining. Right. God. Yeah. yeah. Chris, what about tournaments for baseball? Anything down the pike with that so, yet? Or I mean, it's come up a couple times. Uh, it goes against our protocols um, to let uh, travel sports in. Um, but in terms of sports, we are looking to um, expand YAC. Uh, we want to bring in um, a trainer, a certified trainer, to specifically work with, let's say, tennis players or baseball players. You know, and for an additional fee, you can one day out of the week, you can spend three hours working with a tennis pro or a golf pro or a whatever. So we want to specialize YAC to specific sports if people are looking for that, because I feel like this town doesn't really have a lot of specific training for sports. And when you just go to YAC, it's fine. Your kids run around, but if you have kids that are athletes and they want to work on their skills in the summer, we want to provide that at, at, at YAC for an additional fee. So, so j just to be clear, yep. and clarified if I'm, if I'm incorrect, since yep. I've been off the Park Commission for mm -hmm. seven, eight years, is the travel part of it not allowed unless they meet specifics regarding the amount of Monroe children that are on the roster? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. We have certain uh, criteria they have to fit. Okay. Um, rostered players have to live in a certain geographical area. Yes, that's correct. All right. Just double checking. Yep. All right. I'm good. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight. All right. Thank you. Mayor Dwyer, did you want to comment on their budget or anything? Just seeing it uh, today for the first time. Um, so we'll gather up some questions for the, uh, the Park Commission, and then we can probably have a better idea of where we're at. We'll just as as we're kind of going backwards in so far as their contributions. Uh, when I first became mayor in 2018, we gave them 324. 
We're giving him 312 proposed this year. Last year we gave 302. I don't know how you get ahead on the programming or anything else without increasing the cost, uh, the share cost of the, uh, the parks uh, running. But, but I'm open, whatever Chris wants to do. All right, thank you. Yeah. I just, I, this wasn't included in, uh, in, our, in our proposal to you, but uh, we just um, uh, hired a uh, company to do cameras uh, in the park, and it's going to cost us uh, 34000 to, I think we're getting about, I think it's eight, 8 to 12 cameras. They're all in one system. It's going to provide Wi-Fi to the whole park, so anyone in the park is going to get Wi-Fi, um, and that's going to come out of our capital project, uh, capital uh, fund which I think years past, there was some capital money that was Do you have available. cameras there now? Does the we police no department, cameras, no. the police department doesn't have any cameras nope. there? No, no, no. Are you never, tying into the police department? We're not, no. They, they, so it got to a point where, I mean, this, is, this camera issue for us has been going on since I've been on the board for about seven, six or seven years. I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and it just, it wasn't feasible to do it as a system. So um, as a board, we decided let's just do it. And then if we can tie it in later on, great. But if we keep waiting, it's never going to get done. So it's going in. The project's going to start this month. It'll be installed before the winter. So that's one project that we can cross off our five-year plan. Um, and, then, and then eventually, if we can tie it into the police, great. And if we can't, at least we have our own internal system. So that's... Did, how many people bid on it? We had three bids. Actually, it might have been four. I'm not, it was three or four, I'm not sure. All right. I wish I would have known about this ahead of time because that's our grant writer got us twenty eight thousand for for Mombasia. Not for, I'm sorry for the senior center. All right. Yeah. Next time. Just any time okay. anytime you do a big project like that, let us know. Okay. Yeah. It's it's just been one of those projects that's been going on that's, for, that's, for years. Yeah. And I just wanted to get that one done. All right. <laughs> all <laughs> right. You. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you for your volunteer work. It's all appreciated. Tony, can I just add something as sure. far as um, when you were saying for the camera project, um, you had gotten three or four bids. So just so you know, if you could keep those bids so that when you do submit in, Kristen, for the, you know, for payments, we'd like to have them all together because the auditors will look for those. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, budget. So, through a little diligence and effort on, uh, on our finance department's part, we were able to dwindle down, dwindle down, sorry, the uh, exceeded amount. And right, uh, there's some here. If anybody doesn't have a copy of the budget, there's a few up here. I know we have it up here. Everybody up here has it. So we were able to dwindle down the uh, cap number to just over $76,000 from a little above 900000 There was tweaking done in some of the revenues. There was tweaking done uh, in some of the expenses, which were cut. And we still have uh, some more to do because there are some other increases that we really haven't included in the budget currently. So right now we are at a... $76,142 over the cap, which amounts to a, currently amounts to a 4.94% to a village home and 1.35 to a town home. Uh, I will tell you that my goal is to balance that as best as we can. So that's where we're at right now. Anybody have any questions? That's pretty impressive that we got it down. Yeah. So far that much. Yeah, it's it's the smarts of Helen and Roberta that get it to that hmm. point. I believe oh, we it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Thank you for the compliment, Mr. McGinn. <laughs> <laughs> did did, did uh, anybody have any questions? No. Uh, Council, is it is it wise to close the public hearing now? On the budget itself, if you yeah. don't anticipate. You can still make changes as a board um, right. beyond this point up through November 21st. So uh, if the only reason you would keep it open at this point is for public comment or outside comment. So if you don't anticipate 
receiving further public comment, you can close the public hearing and then continue to work with the budget as a board. All right. I mean, we have till November 20 21st is the final day yeah. to adopt. So um, let's, but you let, have to close let, the hearing by the November 15th. All right. Let's let's keep it open till November 9th. Let, let, let's do that. I don't think there's any harm in doing that. So I'll make a motion to keep open the continuation of the public hearing for the 2023 town budget and benefit assessment rolls to November 9th at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter. A second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Cancarillo, aye. Begin, aye. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, uh, I will make a motion to open the continuation of public hearing to consider the adoption of local law A-V1 2022 to amend chapter 57 zoning concerning the heavy industry zone, uh, which are the proposed amendments to the HI zone. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Scancarello. Call the question. Ingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Okay. No public comment. No public comment. Anything to add? Uh, not, not at this time. All right. I, I, I would, uh, I would recommend that we um, keep the public hearing open until the 9th, November 9th meeting. How about we go December? I'm sorry, November 21st. Uh, I'll make that. I'll amend that motion to okay. uh, keep it open until November 21st uh, at 7 p.m. or shortly thereafter. I'll second that. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. And aye. Okay. I will make a motion to open the continuation of the public hearing to consider the adoption of local law F-V1 2022 to establish a registry of all rental properties in the town. Do second. I'm seconded by Councilman McGinn. Call the question. Ingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. Again, aye. Okay. No public comment? No public comment. Okay. So I, I did have some conversation with council on this. There were some concerns uh, that we have going forward. Uh, Mike, you had met, expressed a concern about parking. Uh, we have a situation right now which I guess we could discuss in executive session uh, because it's uh, it, it's a legal situation. So uh, I, 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 I won't get into it until we get into executive session, which would apply to a, a, a rental property. Yeah, I, I believe we, we have to really address the uh, the number of vehicles that should be permitted. Uh, it seems like some of these rental properties are turning into uh, commercial. Uh, commercial establishments rather than rental properties. I think we have to really address that. It's not, it, uh, it's a quality of life issue for the residents that live there and it's something we need to uh, really. And the people uh, around, yeah. the surrounding homes, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, it's, it's got something we need to uh, fine tune for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, one other comment is I believe we have a version two. It's not just version one anymore because Mr. Nugent did make some changes, and I believe Val got it today, right? Okay. Oh, okay. So okay. if she got it today, then it wasn't on the original agenda. Right. But so, I believe there is a so more will, revised version. I will, I will then make a motion to keep open the continuation of the public hearing to consider the adoption of local law F-V2 to establish a registry of all rental properties in the town, and that would be on November 21st, 2022. Do I have a second? Bring them to second. At 7 p.m., sorry, or immediately thereafter. Okay. Next item. Uh, oh, oh. oh, I'm sorry, call the question. Bring them I. Cool, I. Cardone, I. Ancarello, I. And I. So move. <laughs> Motion to keep open the continuation of public hearing for, for the proposed Arrow Park Water District. I'll make that motion. Second. Call the question. Ingham, aye. Cole, aye. Cardone, aye. Aye. And aye. Okay. No new update. We're still waiting here back on the grant <coughs> application. So there's no new news. 
No public comment. So I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that the best to do with this is I'm going to push it back to December 5th, but since we don't have a schedule for next year, I was thinking it would probably be best to go into next year, but we'll put it on December 5th. So I'll make a motion to keep open the continuation of the public hearing for the proposed Arrow Park Water District on December 5th at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter. Thank Move you. to second. second. Who, who, who? Take your pick. I think we all second. I think we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> give that to Ms. Uh, Bingham. Give it to Mary it. Bingham. She, she is the Mary water, Bingham uh, wins that one. She is the water guru, so. Okay. Uh, we're not going too fast, right? Okay. So I could speed up then. <laughs> okay. Uh, call a question. Bingham, I. Cool, I. Cardone, I. Ancarello, I. Good night. Okay. I will make a motion to keep open the continue to open. I'm sorry to open the continuation of the public hearing regarding proposed amendments of local law E-V1, 2021, amending Chapter 50 zoning to establish a two-family dwelling overlay for the area of the town north of Route 17. Do I have a Hull second. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Hull. Call the question. Ingham, I. Hull, I. Cardone, I. Agrello, I. Can I? No public comment. No public comment. Anything to add? I believe we, we did get the response back from the county. Yes. So I think we were still in the reviewing phase of that and uh, to speak to council and uh, the planner, make sure that they are uh, in the law in its present form is in, uh, in compliance with what the county submitted and also what we want to do going forward. Okay. So I'll make public hearing open until uh, November 21st uh, at 7 p.m. or shortly thereafter. I'll second. Okay. Full question. Ingham, I. Cool, I. Cardone, I. Oh, I. And I. So moved. I'll open up. I'll make a motion to open the continuation of the public hearing regarding local law H-V1 of 2022 to amend chapter 57 zoning concerning the regulations governing tree preservation. Hull second. second. Seconded by Councilwoman Hull. Call the question. Bingham I. Hull I. Cardone I. Oh, I. And I. So move. I do have public comment. Okay. J.A. Ruiz. Okay. J.A. Ruiz. Okay. Joshua Fina. State your name and where you live. That's right. Oh, my name is Josh Fino. Uh, do you want the specific address or just the town? Town's fine. Monroe, New okay. York. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... May I continue? Yes. Okay. Uh, in that case, I looked at the proposed changes in the introduction. Uh, there are a couple sections out that resident I didn't. Joshua, if you could just make sure that you speak into the mic, that it lights up red when you're speaking. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Should I start over? No, that's fine. Start. Sorry. Yeah, go, go right ahead. Okay. So, most importantly, I think section. Um, excuse me. I believe it was 7, 5785B1 is the article. Uh, I think that it creates a sort of a threat to the pres tree preservation aspect of this. Uh, it eliminates transparency uh, and allows personal opinions to supersede code and public opinion. Uh, that change is to allow opinion to overrule what the normal proceedings would be. Okay, so in addition to that, I think section two uh, Article 57-3, uh, I would suggest a different wording where that wording would be a circular area around each tree is measured from the center of the trunk. The critical root zone is an area within which a significant excavation of soil, compaction, uh, filling, or other disturbances to the soil can be reasonably anticipated to result. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get through in three minutes. So. Oh, you got five. Oh, you have more oh, than three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. I'll slow down. I apologize. All right. So in section two. 
Article 57-3. It defines what the critical root zone is. Um, the change that's proposed would change how that root zone is defined and how it's determined. Uh, what I would like to see as a resident is some clause that says something to the effect of the radius of the critical root zone shall be taken as whichever of the following is greatest. The measured maximum radius of the canopy, the result when calculated as one foot of radius for each inch of DBH or as estimated by an arborist. So to give this a couple of different layers. Um, so also continuing on, section six also in article 57-3, uh, a woody plant emerging from the ground at that point, I would suggest adding typically, because there's other sections that discuss it being more than just a, a stem. That section eight, 7-8 have been made. And 57-84 calls out some fines in 57-84-B-4. Um, $750 is from 2012 in 2022 money. That's closer to $1,000. So the schedule fees may want to be adjusted as well. 784, 784, possible for abuse. What happens over the course of, oh, geez, sorry, of, say, a decade, you know? What, what does that look like? So over a long period of time, I feel like that could be abused slowly. Uh, and again, in section 11, there's a couple of references to fee schedules, uh, $250, which would be $325 today. Again, $750 is $1,000 today. And then finally, uh, in 5786 part A5, <clears throat> the term caliper is used instead of DBH. The context is different, but if it's not defined uh, somewhere, caliper may want to be defined the same way that DBH is, or just in the same manner that DBH is. So uh, with all that said, those were my comments. Thank you for having me. Thank you very Thank much. You, Appreciate you coming down, Josh. Thank you. Josh, do you have your comments uh, in written form that you could submit? Or oh, you know how to have to do it tonight. Maybe email it to the clerk. Okay. Yeah. Be Thank helpful. you. That'd be great. Thanks. Anybody else? Maureen also Richardson. forward those to the... Uh, you, did, you want, did you sign up, sir? This is working. I'm Maureen Richardson, citizen of Monroe. Um, we're continuing tree speak. I did not write anything, but I'm just going to talk about some research that... Some members of Preserve Monroe have been going out and doing that I wanted to just present as a general and then I'm probably gonna submit the more specific uh, over email. So essentially, the town of Monroe is unique to this area because we have actually a written out law for trees rather than to have a law that constructs the ability to have a tree board. And I believe that that is something that we should maintain and grow on even more because a tree board can become very subjective and I know a lot of people in the town of Monroe are always concerned about politics and ideologies and flipping so having something that the entire town of Monroe can agree on and look at on a piece of paper that is not subjective that has the facts that is backed up by people in the DEC by arborists by just people in general of what they define as a heritage tree of what they want to see the town look like with natural buffer zones um, which are basically can be put in the law as you know the spot around the yard on subdivisions should be left to create a buffer between homes and the street um, that there are certain ways of writing this language that have been not exemplified by places like Woodbury and Warwick, even though they do have strong tree preservation tendencies because they've elected or appointed the right people to their boards, um, the tree boards. Um, but more, it's interesting, it's actually in more places that are urban, they feel the need to write these codes um, out 
and it is not subjective. There are places like Terrytown and Mount Vernon. Um, New York City even has really strict but um, well-defined, which is what Monroe might need, well-defined uh, construction preservation ordinances of how to care for a tree during construction. Um, and we have <laughs> a path, basically, to choose. I think we're at this point where we used to be somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And now, because of COVID and everything else, people are fleeing New York City. But they're fleeing to places that have beautiful old growth trees. They're fleeing to somewhere that they can pretend they are cottage core and live in a fairy tale like Vermont, but we're an hour from New York City. So to have something that lists out all of the specific specimens that the people in the town want to see preserved, want to see rebalanced and protect a list of heritage trees that have grown past a certain size, past a certain age, that mean something to the public, um, that should be in the law. I think that this touches a lot of people um, and they don't realize that they can come down here and speak on this issue and have a voice in the way that their town can look for not the next decade, but literally for the next 400 years uh, of the life of that tree. And so this is something really important that needs the public input of every single citizen in Monroe who drives home and you know feels that wash of relief when they drive off the highway and drive through this wooded, rural area that is going to become desirable, that is becoming desirable, but just needs a little cleanup and a little helping hand and human intervention because nature doesn't do this on its own. It's beautiful, but the second that mankind steps in, we do start ruining things, and I can attest to that. <laughs> um, so that's basically what I wanted to say is that there are words, um, existing code, that looks really good that we need to customize to Monroe's needs um, and we need a way for the public and this board to cooperate on that so that everyone in Monroe can be happy with where they live. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Dennis Fordham. <clears throat> Hello, Dennis Fordham. I'm a member of the uh, Monroe Conservation Commission. Uh, we are in the process of reviewing the revised uh, tree code uh, put together by Max Scher. Uh, tomorrow night we're having a, a meeting to discuss uh, where we stand at the moment. One thing we are trying to do is to identify an arborist or an urban forester to assist us in, uh, assist you, in uh, making the revisions or ad adopting the revisions uh, that are appropriate uh, to, our, to our town. Uh, I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, when we do identify uh, an arborist, uh, we will submit those qualifications to you. And I understand once agreed that the town may be prepared to pay the appropriate fee uh, for that arborist. Just to clarify, we don't normally go back and forth, but I will say I, I did speak to Joe Corona today. I, I, he, yes, and, I wasn't, and, I wasn't aware did, where we, we stood on that. We did discuss that, that and, yes. and that will be obviously paid by the town of Monroe. Yeah, okay, so I just wanted to say, and obviously th those comments I've heard tonight, we, we, I would imagine we'll all take those into account, take, the, take all the comments into account that we've heard tonight as well. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Once, the, once we approve minutes, that yes. actually goes to our planner, and the planner will take all those into the, into account. Uh, uh, is, is that Max Scher? Max or, Stock. I'm sorry. Yeah. Max, yeah, Stock. Max Stock, yeah, Stock. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, thank you very thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you. Appreciate it. Love the Brooklyn accent. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for public comment. Anybody else? Um, I just wanted... We'll oh. just go back one more time. J.A. Ruiz. I just wanted to say, I also sent some comments to Max. Um, some of them, again, were at the critical root zone, as uh, Josh had mentioned, and I haven't heard back from him. So I'm hoping we'll have that revised version two coming after there's a little bit more input from the, the residents. Okay. 
All right, I will make a motion to keep open the continuation of the public hearing regarding local law H-V1 of 2022 to amend chapter 57 zoning concerning the regulations governing tree preservation for November 21st, 2022 at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter. Bring him to second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Poole, aye. Cardone, aye. Anchorillo, aye. Aye. Item 5.1 is the acceptance of the October 3rd, 2022 minutes. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Poole will second. Any changes, alterations, corrections? No. Call the question. Aye. Poole, aye. Cardone, aye. Anchorillo, aye. And I. So moved. Next up is the general fund abstract of 22, number, I'm sorry, number 22-16 for $59,071.45. And I'm sorry, that contains checks 29237 through 29271. Bring them to second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Poole, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. And I. So moved. Next up is the escrow fund abstract. <coughs> and that is $22,928.80. Check, checks numbers 2052 through 2054. I'll make the second. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Bingham, Councilwoman Bingham, second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Full aye. Cardone, aye. Anchorillo, aye. And aye. Girls, there is no further financial aspect on the agenda. You are welcome to leave. Good point, not Val. You, Madam, not you, Madam Clerk. You're, you're, you're stuck here with us this evening. Good point. Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. Hi, Mary Beth. Hi, Mary Beth. Okay, uh, <clears throat> under new business, first item is a sad one for us. Uh, we received a letter from Ward Brower uh, giving us notice of his retirement, not resignation, retirement from the a conservation Commission. So I, I, I will make the motion to accept that resignation with reservations. With regret, who yep. will second? Yeah. Who will second? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Who will aye? Cardone, aye. Cancarello, aye. Good night. And in true Ward Brower fashion, it was, it's it was a written letter, not a typed one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ward, for your service. Uh, we'd like you to come to the November 9th meeting, okay? I know you, you'd probably be here anyway, but I just want to make, I just want to make sure you're here November 9th, okay? All right. Uh, so I, I had a request from the Conservation Commission that the town board, and I will make this motion to appoint, uh, for the town board to appoint Frederick E. Schupfer to the Conservation Advisory Council, slot four, term to expire 12-31-2023. Bring him to second. Any discussion? Call, call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. And aye. Okay. No, that, that's not. That's not Ward Spot, of course, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. It, the Conservation Commission filled right now. Ward, I'm sure this 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 gentleman is is a, a good man and a good fit, but he's not going to fill your shoes. So, <laughs> you know. Um, and he's definitely not the same private citizen you are. No, <laughs> no not even close, I'm sure. <laughs> not even close. No. But he does have an impressive pedigree. Yes, so. he does. Yeah. Yep. 
doesn't have that historical uh, he doesn't knowledge no. that the ward possesses for this oh. town. So uh, hysterical. historical and hysterical. <laughs> it's both. We see both sides of it here, of course. All right. Uh, next item is the Mombasha Park security cameras. Uh, they have been completed. Uh, there's just a couple of items on the punch list. Our park director, Emery Morris, explained that to us, uh, to me this uh, afternoon. So hopefully those will be taken care of. Uh, the bid was awarded to Excel, who also did the cameras in town hall here. And uh, after a couple of minor, minor adjustments, everything will be... Uh, Complete. So, item 7.4 uh, is the 2023 inter intermunicipal agreement for dial -a bus services with the town of Woodbury. Uh, there was a, a little bit more than a 3% increase in that, and the contract is for $7,400 this year. So, we need a motion for the supervisor to sign that. I'll make a motion for the supervisor to sign the res uh, the dial -a bus service for the town of Woodbury for $7,400. Second. Just add uh, with approval of uh, yes, final With form. the approval with our very knowledgeable attorney, Mr. Nugent. <laughs> wow. 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 Okay. That's like I told you to say. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, call a question. Bingham I. Cool I. Cardone I. Hank Grillo I. McGinn I. So moved. The other thing is, uh, I'll, I will discuss this and then somebody will have to make the motion, but this should also be done in final form. I'll let council describe the issues surrounding it right now. So we have an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Woodbury for dog control services. We've had it for the past five years. Uh, and we need to enter into an agreement going forward for the 2023 year. Council, would you like to just explain the, the, the one part, yeah, with the enforcement? So the, the only issue is one of enforcement, which really isn't addressed in the IMA, but dog control officers come from state law, from the agriculture and markets law. That's where the designation comes from and the regulations. So under that law, the person who issues appearance tickets is your appointed dog control officer. That law also says that town may enter into an agreement with another municipality to provide the dog control services, which is what Monroe has done with Woodbury. But there seems to be a question uh, from Woodbury and on our side as to who would issue the appearance ticket legally. Woodbury's dog control officer could issue appearance tickets in the town of Monroe because of the IMA, but it, either they don't want to or we're not sure they want to be involved. They had suggested um, one of the employees of the town issue the appearance ticket, but that employee is not a peace officer or police officer that would be authorized to issue appearance tickets. So. The issue is we either need to identify someone in the town that is a peace officer, such as the code enforcement officer that could issue appearance tickets, or see if the town of Woodbury will issue the appearance tickets via their dog control officer. They would still come to the town of Monroe Court, but it would just be issued by the dog control officer from Woodbury. So that's the issue that just enforcement needs to be addressed. If someone would make a motion for the supervisor to sign that uh, in final form approved by council, the amount is $27,796.90. I'll make that motion. Cool, we'll second. Got that motion, right, Val? Okay, Madam Clerk. All right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Call the question. Thing am I. Cool, I. Cardone, aye. Hank Rollo, aye. Aye. So moved. Okay. Next up is 7.5, which is the notice of the 30-acre subdivision on Carlsberg Road within the town of Palm Tree and the village of KJ. 
So it's 30 acres, which uh, address amounts to 137 Seven Springs Road, section 367, block one, lots four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then section 367, block one, lots one through 32. And it's, uh, Councilwoman Bingham had reached out to me uh, late last week uh, regarding this and regarding the fire district since our firemen handle a lot of the uh, calls over there uh, with the uh, mutual aid. Uh, she thought it would be best that they also be added as an interested party. I spoke to council today. He reached out to their attorney, Joe Bedore. Sent the letter out this morning, uh, yeah, advising. Okay. Oh, and sent them a copy of the notice of intent for lead agency as well. Okay. So that would, uh, you know, that would suffice then. And it now. Yeah, it's ultimately up to them, yeah. obviously, to do that or say that they're interested. But once they give that notification, they would receive all the secret related documents. All right. I'll speak to uh, Chairman Tom Sullivan. Uh, from the fire district, who by, I, I would like to send out some well wishes to Tom. Tom was in a, uh, he got T-boned last week, was in a car accident, was in a hospital. He's out of the hospital, he's recouping at home, and he is, uh, you know, I spoke to him twice. He's, he, he's doing well, he's in, he's sore, he's in a little, little pain, but uh, he's a tough guy and one of the best people that live in Monroe, so we, we, <coughs> we wish him well. Absolutely. Uh, Okay, that said, there's no motion needed on that one. Okay, under old business, item 8.1 is uh, amendments to Local Law 1 of 2022, which is the short-term rentals. Uh, we had some items that we wanted to, to change, so what I'd like to do is set a public hearing for November 9th to discuss those, those uh, amendments to the law. They, they had to do with some clarifications, with, some, with, with the alarms, uh, with uh, if you are an owner-occupied uh, rental. And so uh, th that's just a few of them, but. I'll make a motion that we hearing for <clears throat> November 9th. to the uh, short-term rental law. I'll second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Skankaro, aye. Aye. Okay. I just want to add this to the agenda, uh, uh, item 8.2. Did, did you want to bring up the DG Realty uh, situation right now? Do you want to discuss that, council, please? Yeah, I mean, we... And that's the potential transfer of property to the town that would include an access road. Um, however, there are matters of escrow, transfer documents, um, performance bonds that we're waiting for responses from the attorney for the current owner to provide to the town. Uh, documents that we'll need to review and obviously there may be conditions and other things that the town board may want to impose. So um, that's what we're waiting on right now. I got any, anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Public comment? No public comment. No public comment? Okay. General public comment. General. Come on up, Carol. You don't have to sign in. She'll sign you in. Personal bad news. All right. State, um, state your name. Emily. Sorry, Carol Hawksers, Monroe, New York. Um, so I know that the water pump we're, we're looking, it needs improvement. Um, and I'm wondering, I know you're working on that, right, Mary? It can be a yeah. water district one. Just yes, water district one. Okay. Yes, yep, yep. So that's being worked on. And I'm wondering, um, 
because I'm assuming that the Rye Hill Preserve proposed development is also Water District 1, I mean, from what I've read. Uh, how is that going to be impacted if we're already having issues with the water pump already? We're not, we're not going back and forth. Just you, we'll, no comment, we'll no. comment after. Okay, okay. Um, I also saw it was stated in, in the town email today um, there was a disruption in the water service, uh, Rye Hill and High Ridge. I'm wondering if that had anything to do with this, this water pump. Uh, or, or what, why there was a disruption. Um, another question that I have is, is it typical, and it may be, that the town planner would be reviewing a developer's proposal to give input on that they're following the, the guidelines of what would be appropriate for the development? Uh, you know, I, I'd like to know that. Um, and then also just following up from the last meeting, the distance from where the proposed development is to where the watershed or Mombasha, really where the watershed starts, what's the distance? Just would like to know. I mean, you know, we would want a certain amount of distance away from the watershed. Um, I know that was, that's the concern there. Um, and then just my last question, I, I think this is, this is my frustration. Um, you know, I wanna work together with the town board, with, with all of you, um, but my frustration is I feel like oftentimes when I come up here, I don't get any acknowledgement of, of how any of us, just, I'll just speak specifically for myself, feel, and I know there's many others who feel, who are against the CCR zoning, and can we discuss more regarding that? It just seems to be shut down the whole, the whole conversation. I'm not saying you're shutting, but just having a, a, a dialogue about that. Because um, it, it leads to medium to high density housing. Um, and I don't know how, as the town board, you can't see the roadways and municipal services cannot handle this type of zoning. I just, I don't see how that could even happen, especially with what was first pr proposed. I don't know what's coming down the pike. Um, very curious, and it's stressful to even consider what's happening. Um, and Ward, I, I specifically want to say thank you for all that um, you've done for our community. Um, and I highly respect you. And I know you as well are very much against this uh, CCR zoning. But I do thank you uh, for all the time and efforts you put in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I have heard rumors. Sorry, my again. name is Maureen Richardson, um, citizen of Monroe. Um, I've heard rumors of the Woodbury Animal Shelter on Shunamunk closing the cat portion of its shelter. I don't know if they're just struggling financially or if they're trying to work something out, but I just wanted to make a public comment that I know it's budget time and I know we're having our own problems and we shut down our shelter, um, but I was wondering if there would be any room for the town of Monroe to consider reaching out and possibly finding out what's going on with that because, um, I mean, I've adopted like two or three cats over my family's time from the Woodbury Animal Shelter and I live very close to what used to be the Gladstone Estates. Um, and I think it's been so long, but at that time when Gladstone left, there were like hundreds of cats locked in that barn that were not spayed or neutered that um, is basically a big portion of these stray cats that we're still seeing in our area is a huge problem. Sometimes you see them hit on the side of the road and to eliminate one of the only animal shelters in our area that actually um, takes them in, provides them with homes, food, everything like that, advertises and makes a big impact in our community and the fact that we don't have one ourselves, if we can consider reaching out to Woodbury inquiring what's going on with the cat 
portion and um, consider intervening or providing any funding that we might have saved and maybe creating a joint effort shelter, even if it's just on the cat side. Um, that would be great as a cat owner. I can provide photographic evidence of how cute my cats are too, if it comes down to a public hearing. So, um, and I also did wanna say thank you to Ward Brower, he's my hero. So <coughs> we're gonna miss that private citizen a lot. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Don't have any comments? Well, going back to Carroll, uh, Water District 1, as far as the time that I've lived here, I've always heard that a developer somewhere down the road is going to improve Water District 1 if they were part of that Rye Hill Road development. So the town engineer who's on the planning board, I've been in contact with him, and the plans are for Rye Hill Preserve are not that detailed yet to know what the water um, requirements are going to be, but he's well aware of it. And right now what the issues are in Water District 1 is their pressure tanks. It's serving the development on High Ridge, uh, so we've been looking to get new pressure tanks for them. Of course, they would not be adequate for the, the proposed developments on Rye Hill Preserve or anything that would be um, added in that area, but the planning board engineer is well aware and all those engineering aspects would be taken care of during the planning board process. And I'll just piggyback on that, <clears throat> Councilwoman Bingham. So typically during the actual site plan review, uh, is when the planning board would say, all right, well, this is what you, Mr. Developer or Ms. Developer, need to do uh, regarding, um, re regarding your uh, municipal water needs for that, for your plan. And then that's when they would say the existing pump house is not functional to serve uh, these additional units that are part of your plan, and if you want to build your your plan as per the, the subdivision that you've submitted, then you need to do X, Y, and Z to upgrade those um, those facilities. So that's um, that's one of the places we'll look for that to, to happen, to be part of the final resolution, if it comes down to that. And, um, but yeah, clearly something's gonna have to be done. It's not gonna, in its current state, um, it can't, uh, that, that pump house cannot service uh, anything beyond what it's really doing right now. So, um, Mary, you have something else, or? Um, I really don't know the distance from Rye Hill Preserve to Mombasha Reservoir Lake. Um, again, I could reach out to somebody who's more knowledgeable than me, and I'll see if I can get you an answer for the next meeting. Um, and is the town planner reviewing? Um, I don't know, Mr. McGinn, have you heard if Max is looking into making sure that all the aspects of the CC are also being complied with that? I didn't have any contact with Max, so I don't know the I answer. I have not spoke to Max in the last week, but okay. when, when we forwarded their latest revised plan, he was uh, doing his due diligence and going through it. And um, when he has done what he feels to be uh, his job and, and what the, uh, the compliance with the local law goes versus the revised plan that was submitted, then we'll, uh, he'll come back to us and we'll take it from there. It'll be part of the public process and, and uh, we'll, we'll start again with this. So, I mean, listen, you can come up and ask one other question, but we're not gonna go back and forth, so. Well, the, the, you, come on, come on up, Ash. I just wondered: is that standard? Is that typical with the developer? Would meet would be sharing the plans with the um, planner? <laughs> well, it's, developers. It's, it's typical for us to say, "Hey, you've sent this to us. We're going to give it to our planner, who's the expert, it is typical. to review it." Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't say what other towns do or villages do or don't do, but that's what we decided to do with this as an extra level of 
of reassurance that what is being submitted by the developer is con in compliance with the CCR as is written. The com planning board, wouldn't, wouldn't they be able to do that? When it goes to the planning board, we'll, I'll, I'll answer. Okay, okay. Yeah. When it goes to the planning board, it will be after, it will be just like the process specifies. It will be after that comes to us. We've spoke to the planner. The planner has told us that yes, it does, or no, it doesn't, or wherever that stands, and then we'll, we'll act accordingly on it. Finally, I would also like to say thank you to Ward. Uh, <laughs> I kind of got my start in the Monroe Conservation Commission because of Ward. And he is very knowledgeable, and he has a great sense of humor. So thank you, Ward. And I will address the cat shelter thing that Maureen brought up. So I'm in regular communication with Kate Luciani, who's a councilwoman on the town of Woodbury. Um, I've actually texted her to find out if the rumors are true that they're closing down the cat portion. I haven't heard back yet, but <laughs> you know, before the next meeting, or even if I do hear back prior to the next meeting, can I email your Preserve Monroe email? Okay, so I'll let you know as soon as I hear something back. I texted Supervisor Burke and, oh, did and, you? and Pam as well. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're reaching out to two members. You're welcome. Ms. Carol, just to address some of the other questions you had, um, regarding the watershed, I mean, basically, if you look at, as the plan was written, the, the um, development area of the shade meadows or shade farms went up to about a little bit shy of the entrance of Briarcliff. So basically from Briarcliff all the way up and down Berry to um, where Lake Mabesh is would be the watershed area, which is a considerable, I mean, that's a pretty considerable area. Um, that would not be developed as part of this plan. Um, I mean, regarding the dialogue, I mean, I, I think we have, you know, uh, tried to be as transparent as we possibly can. We've told you what we know, and, uh, you know, we'll continue doing so, and, and none of this is going to get done, like you said, once we get the plan back from the planner, we'll, we'll take it from there, and it'll be part of the public process, and people will have input, and I said we can sit here on a Saturday morning and talk about it and do all those things, so... You know, we'll keep doing what we're doing, but there's no, uh, you know, I, I understand you're opposed to it. I, I get that, you know. Um, but, um, you know, our job as a, as a board is, is we, we know people are opposed to it. We know people are pro for it. We also know that the developer has certain, uh, certain rights under New York State law, and we got to take all that into account. And that's why we came up with this plan, so that we would have the greatest possible control far greater than any other type of zoning category that we have to control what is built there. And that, that is the biggest benefit of the CCR. So, um, you know, we'll be, we'll continue this process. We'll be open and transparent and we will, uh, continue the conversation. Anybody else? Pat, you just want to give a quick update on the pickleball court? So sorry to say the pickleball court has come to a halt with, uh, with the leaves coming down. We have to get ready for winter. We, it could be as early as Halloween, uh, snow or before. So I, we have the, the first round in the ground of item four, um, and it'll probably be better for that to set over the winter, and we'll get right back on it in the spring and get pickleball back going. Thank you. I, I know part of your reasoning was you would rather have the stone settle and compact more over the winter. So, yes, uh, that, that size it, it, it's a it's a really large area, and we have to treat that just like a road where we have to put down a certain amount of different surfaces in there before we can blacktop. Otherwise, within a couple of years it'll crack and break. So we want it to set up, and we think it'll be great to set all winter. So okay. I think that's a good idea, Mr. Superintendent. I don't know of many uh, outdoor winter pickleball leagues, so I think uh, it's very prudent to wait until the spring and have that settled. So good, uh, good call. I was watching it on TV today. 
So, so Maureen, we've heard back from uh, Woodbury, and uh, those are rumors. The cat, the cat shelter is not closing down. Yeah. And that's confirm, confirmed by Kate Luciani mm -hmm. and Supervisor and, Burke. And, so. and, and I appreciate having the information clarified. I, we appreciate the question. I'll make a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, legal. I'll second. Call the question. King am I? Oh, aye. Pardon, aye. Skankerel, aye. Aye. So moved. All set. Okay. Uh, I would like to make a motion to return from executive session to our regularly scheduled meeting of October 17, 2022. I'll second it again. Call the question. King am I? Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Cancarello, aye. Begin, aye. Okay. No decisions were made in executive session that required a motion, but I would like to acknowledge the retirement of Councilwoman Bingham. Uh, she is free to do whatever she wants every day. So. Right. Get up late. <laughs> Thank you. Not, not retirement from the board. You do What's look that? very well rested today. Not retirement from the town board. No, no, not from the town board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, from, no, from, no, from, from a full-time job. Full -time job. Yeah, from a full-time job. Yeah, my day job. So that said, I will make a motion to adjourn. I will second. Call the question. Bingham, I. Cool, I. Cardone, I. Scancarello, I. And again, I. So moved. <laughs>